as loud. Well, I think we're still going through some of the uh, the process in terms of as players continue to come available or players continue to uh, still be out there. You know, we are we are looking for the right kind of deal for the right kind of players that we're looking for. How much do you start to get a read in that regard? How much do you start to get a read about who might be available even after the draft? <laughs> well, that really won't happen till after the draft because then you'll you'll get an even more of a sense. You know, and, and we've been fortunate the last couple of years that we've done pretty good in free agency. And, you know, we got to continue to study the guys that potentially can come free after the draft. When you guys consider a bunch of cap spaces, did you anticipate Beach have this patient in free agency the way you guys have? Yes. Um, you know, we didn't anticipate the situation, obviously, when Carson came available, bringing him in, you know, having to change and shift in, in mid stride and, and really look at what's out there now. Um, I think that's kind of what's pushed us into waiting and being a little bit more patient as we go through this. Rob, does, um, does the possibility of a Terry Hill at some point play into, you know, how you manage the captain? Is there anything to say about that? Not necessarily. I mean, you know, um, a lot of these things that you guys will be asking or, or want to know about, it's really all about, you know, the, the future for us in terms of, you know, our cap planning for this year, for next year, you know, into the future. From your perspective, what happened with the J.D. McKissick negotiations? More so than anything else, you know, during that period, J.D. wanted to come back. The Bills uh, brand being said that it complicates relationships. Obviously, you guys know each other well. Yep. Uh, from your perspective, where do those relationships with the Bills front office and coaching staff stand right now? I think they stand okay. Why, why do you feel that way? If you said it complicated the relationship. I think they're okay. Okay. We've had a real good evaluation um, of, of our personnel, and one of the things we did talk about was Cole and Cole's development and the things are going and how they're going. Um, I feel really good about what he's done, and um, we're very excited about Cole's future for us. We really are. Yes, yeah, to your, your point, Ben, yes. Since the season's been over, sitting now with the defensive coaches, listening to them talk about where we are with our personnel, what we're looking for, um, he's a guy that we really are pleased. We really are. You look at the way he played down the stretch. You look at the way he did now. He did get COVID and get sick, and you know that, that kind of whacked him a little bit. But when we had a chance to really say, hey, look at what he's done, look at how he's developed, that's pretty good. No, what we're gonna, what we're doing as far as uh, we're starting April 18th, and uh, we'll go from there with the uh, with the off-season program. Uh, that'll be the beginning of phase one, and then phase two will start in three weeks, or excuse, yeah, in, uh, in in three weeks, and then phase two, and then phase three will be at the uh, end of May into June. Do you know when you guys go back to Richmond this year? We're working on what we're going to do for the uh, uh, for the uh, summer months. Um, the the the, um, the new um, the new Bill Walsh. Yes. Well, first foremost, I, I really do believe that inclusion is very very important. Um, I believe that by doing so, what you've done is you've you've opened up uh, your pool of candidates, and you ensure yourself of finding the best candidate by opening up that pool. Um, I think the uh, the move to to create a minority position that's that's connected directly to the offensive coordinator, the quarterbacks coach, um, putting him in touch with game planning, I think is a hell of an idea. Because the one thing that you know is shown for the most part is that the next head coach is funneled right through that position, you know, through the quarterback position, and so giving guys a direct pipeline to that. Um, is going to create some positive opportunities, I believe. Yep. Well, you know, we, we, we vetted a lot of players. Carson was one of those guys. Um, one of the things that I do point to is at one point they were 11-2 and two until he got hurt. 
And just knowing what he's capable of, what his potential is, uh, feeling that he's been very close to that potential again, uh, we'd like to believe we have an opportunity to, to, to help that young man get to where he, he, he truly can be. So we're pretty excited about, about him. Um, we broke down a lot of his tape. In fact, when we uh, found out he was available, one of the things that we did was we got together again um, in the, at Indy in our suite that we were using, and we had our video guy bring tape. And we studied that game tape, and, and, and we talked about what we were seeing on tape. I mean, we, we dove into this once we knew there was an opportunity. How has his mindset been? It's been very good. Um, you know, obviously he was, he was a little shell-shocked initially, um, but it's been great. It really has. Um, what I've truly appreciated is what his, uh, his former teammates have said, guys that he was in the locker room with, guys that he was on the football field with. Uh, I really appreciate you know, them being um, forthright in terms of his impact on, on, on them and the team. So um, when, when, you, when you hear that, you feel pretty good about the decision you made. Ron, you said on the road quite a bit this offseason. Yeah. How was it being back out there? What do you see about the <laughs> Um you know, it, 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 you, you, you get beyond the, the Zoom screen. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, you see more, and it gives you more of an opportunity to really assess a guy. A uh, great example is you, 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 you get a chance to watch certain players, how they handle things, um, how guys react to them, how they react to what's going on. I mean, that's something you can't get on the screen. So, I, 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 you know, it was... It was pretty good. It was um, get a little tiresome, especially at my age now. Um, but it, it was it was good. Ron, the requisite competition committee question about the overtime proposals. How do you feel about both of them? What is your expectation later today? I think Jonathan, that that it, it, this discussion is going to continue. It really does. It, it really is. It really will. Mostly because I, I think there's different points of view that that everybody has to take into to account. Um, and not just the competition committees, you know, because we're not we're not all on this, you know um, all together on that. It, it, this is really a, a topic that's going to be discussed. And um, you know, for me, I'm more of a traditionalist, you know, and, and, and so that's kind of where I'm leaning. But I'm, I'm open-minded going into these discussions because um, we really haven't had a, uh, one opinion. And so it would be very unfair to go in there and not listen. So we're going to listen. And then on Morrison, one follow-up, what have you learned about him in the times since he got into the building that maybe you didn't know before? Is that he is a um, – really, he's a heck of a young man. I mean, I, I, you know, I've, I've known him. I know who he is. But, I, you know, in, 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 in getting an opportunity to spend time with him, spend time with his, his family, talk with he and his wife, have dinner with he and his wife, and listen um, – I like who he is. I really do. Um, one thing I really appreciate is how resilient he is. I, you know, watching him do the press conference, I loved how he referred to we, um, and then I loved how he referred to and took responsibility for his stuff, for the decisions he's made, for the things that he's done. Um, I, I appreciate that as a, as a coach, listening to a guy that's, you know, more concerned about the team being and us being and we. But hey, that's my fault. That's my responsibility. I got to get that corrected. I appreciated that. Well, for us, and again, you guys have heard me say this when I first got here, we got to make sure we can protect our quarterback. We got to make sure we have playmakers around him. You know, we've got to continue to to look at at, at what our options are, not just in free agency, but getting ready for the draft. You know, what what impact position player can we find? Um, through the draft, so we're going to spend a lot more time finishing up with uh, with our evaluations. You know, we've got the 30 visits coming in pretty soon. Um, that'll be a very important time because, again, we won't be on Zoom. We'll be in person, and and that's something that's going to be very important. <laughs> Well, I'm very happy for Coach. I really am. You know, I think he's a guy that's gone through a lot. He's seen a lot, um, but he's a very veteran coach. He's got a very good way about him. I mean, he built a pretty successful situation in, in, in Chicago, and I would not be surprised to see him do that again in, in, in Houston. Um, you know, some of the things that I do, I modeled after the things that he's done. Um, 
I love the way he relates to players. Um, I love the way he does the meeting. It's something you've got to be able to be there and experience to see. But he handles those very well, and I think the players get a lot out of it. So I, 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 would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Coach has success. Yes, is, is, is really the way it, it's about team. One of the things he, he does, he makes sure the players understand what he's asking of them. You know, and, and, and I, I really appreciate that because it, it's very transparent, it's very out there. Well, I think it's a lot better than, than people are portraying it. I'll tell you that right now. Um, and again, you know, we consciously going into free agency, you know, try to make sure people understand that, that, that why not come to, to, to us? You know, we have, you know, a solid offensive line. We got a thousand yard rusher, thousand yard receiver, you know, so we just try to make sure people understand that there's an opportunity to, 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 to be successful um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think because people realize and recognize just what the position means. You know, in, in the past it was always, oh wow, we can build this and put this 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 great defense on the field and have a solid running attack. You know, we don't we don't have to have a great quarterback. But then people go, well, but if you had a really good quarterback, maybe you can do more. So I think that's what's happened. I think a lot of people are reacting to, to what they've seen the last two years. You know, Tampa Bay had a lot of pieces in place. They get their quarterback. The Rams had a lot of pieces in place. They get their quarterback. I, I think that's really what it's about now, Nikki. And I think if you look at some of the teams that let quarterbacks go, maybe they're in a rebuilding. Maybe they think it's time to, hey, we got to redo our, our team, and we'll find our quarterback again. Well, how, much, how much does the money play into the summer? Oh, I think again, if you're looking at your team, you know, one of the things you got to you got to look at and say, well, do we have the money and the infrastructure in place to pay for it? And if you do, then you're going to try and make that move, I believe. If you don't, you're going to say, wow, you know, we need to put these pieces in place. We need to draft a guy and find out if that's the guy. I think that's, you know, people are choosing and one or the other. I mean, that's the truth because the, the cap is very important to understand and, and how to deal with it. And I guess conversely, when teams decide, like Seattle, Detroit, when you move out from those quarterbacks, how much do you think money plays in that? Like, you got to decide if you're going to pay this guy or But you got to also look at it this way. Did we put ourselves in that position? Did we have a couple of really good drafts? Did we have a couple of key veterans at the right price? And now you sit there and say, wow, now we just got to find that piece. Let's go do that. Um, or you know what, we've gotten to a point where it's time to let these guys go, and now we got to rely on drafting well, putting ourselves in that position, putting ourselves in a spot where we either go out and find a quarterback or we draft that quarterback. So, again, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's what you got to choose. It's not just the quarterback movement. I mean, we've seen this offseason has been, has been you know, the preeminent wide receiver in the game for example, Texas teams. Just what do you make of the approach to, to some of these bigger moves across the league? Do you think that's just an isolated incident? Do you think, or just, I, do you think it's a different era? <clears throat> no, I, I, I think it's got something to do with, with now. This is how people see things are being done, and these teams have been successful. Yeah. And it could be an era. It could be all part of the, you know, from my experience and from listening to coaches over the years, it's about cycles. You know, everybody copies. This is a league of beg, borrow, and steal. And so when you see people having success here, everybody goes, oh, I want to do what they do. So right now it's, it, it's quarterbacks throwing the ball everywhere and these, these receivers making plays. Okay, so then what's going to happen is people are going to adjust, they're going to adapt, and now you're going to have a lot of fast, smaller people out there on defense. People are going to run the ball, run the ball. Now everybody's going to want to run the ball. You know, it's just kind of the cycle. Um, right now this is the cycle I think we're in. Um, we as coaches have to adapt. I mean, two of the coaches that you watch and look at and see them adapt, you know, you watch Andy Reid, he adjusts. You watch Bill Belichick, see how they adjust. And that's what, you know, we all end up doing this. We're, we're seeing what's happening. We're seeing what the trends are. And we've got to be able to match that and play to that ability. Or we got to be one of those teams that are setting the trend. How much do you expect that to have on coaching staff as far as them being able to be retained and have longer centers? 
it, it's 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 it, it, it's going to be all about winning. I mean, it, that that part of it will never change. You know, how long you're someplace is all about winning. And if you're successful, you can have a nice long run. And if you're not, it'll be time to move on. And that's that's the that's the crux of this business. Um, I think that it does play into it. There are certain guys that are true magnets, you know. Um, and, you know, there's a couple of guys that people say, man, if I can get there, I got a chance, you know, to, to get my ring. I mean, that's – especially with the older veteran players, you see that. Um, you know, guys that have had eight, nine, ten-year careers and, and they just haven't gotten, you know, that far in the playoffs. I think those guys are looking, you know, now and they're saying, hey, I'm going to go – I mean, you know – <laughs> trying not to name players because you can't, you're not supposed to, but, you know, this happened the last couple of years where guys, and then they've said it, hey, I came here because this guy was the quarterback. Going back to the free agencies and the perceptions worse than the reality, it seems that it's that way about a lot of things. I mean, there's still the investigation, a lot of things from before you got here. How do you, at a broad level, try to separate what you're doing here from what remains? Well, what I'm trying to make sure everybody is, is first of all, is, is can we get away from doesn't involve the football aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? This is what where we are today as a football team. This is what we're trying to do as a football team. And I get it. People want to continue to pull you back into this. And we're trying to get away from it. And that's what I'm trying to stress. And the truth is, it's about winning. And if, if you believe, you know, you can come in and help us win, you'll take us far away from that. I mean, we have a chance for basically a rebirth. We have a, a new name. You know, we've got different players that we're trying to bring in and have them be part of what we're doing. Um, and if we can get away from it, you know, if we can stop having that every time be the focal point of football, I get it. Let's just, you know, this is this is over here, but this is our focus. I respect what happened over here. I understand how serious it is. But at the end of the day, you know, my job is about football. And, you know, we're trying to create – a sustainable winning culture. I know we use the word culture a lot, but we're serious about it. You know, the things that Jason and I have tried to do for us, I think, is, is important. And we got to continue to do that. And at the same time, though, we have to win. I mean, that's the truth of it. Well, how many of those guys did we did we did we go after? You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that's the thing. You know, it's 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 one thing to to, to have somebody give and say, well, you know, he, he 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 there was no way he was going there. Do you really know that? Did you ask the guy? So let's let's stop assuming. Let's stop hearing stuff secondhand and throwing that out at us. I mean, we're an easy target. I get it, but quite honestly, I'm tired of it. I really am. But the only way to fix it is win. And that's the truth. I mean, that really is the truth. It's it, you have to win. So, that that's that's obviously our number one priority is is is, is building a football team that wins. Because I believe that. Why, why, why shouldn't I? And that's the whole part about it, Ben. Why shouldn't I do the things that I do to try and promote who we are? Because I really do believe in us. I really do believe where we are. I believe in this fan base. You know, but we have to win, and that's the truth of the matter. We have to win. I think it should have an impact, you know, and, and you know, we've always kind of done it that way. You know, we, we just we look at it, and again, I've said this because I believe this. If you open the pool of candidates to everybody, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, gender, race, none of that matters. You just, these are the, these are our candidates. They come from all walks of life. You're going to hire the best person. And I believe that. And, and the Rooney rule is just making it a point. I mean, we've always kind of done it that way anyways. So this is just part of it. And, um, you know, I'm glad it happened. Well, really, you have to, to me, you have to get past 
the draft before you can start doing those things. Because, you know, if you if you get a certain guy and you spend a lot of money on him and then all of a sudden you draft that position, now what happens? I mean, we're trying to be very thoughtful as we go through this. I get a list of names from Chris. We look at those those names by position, who's available, and we say, well, you know, we talk about what the cost will be. We talk about what the impact will be on, on, on what we're going to do in the draft. I mean, we go through this pretty big process, me, Martin, Marty, Eric, and Chris, and we try to determine, you know, what is our next step? Where are we headed next? Um, this is all part of, you know, planning it out. Um, but when you get to this point, because, again, after the, after the first surge, everything kind of resets. And so now you've got to go through it again, and we've gone through it again, and we have some, some guys in mind, obviously, that we like. Um, we have talked to some people's agents. But right now, it's like, and, and not just us either. We're not the only ones waiting. Um, you know, because at this time, there's not going to be a, there's maybe one or two guys that may be a big salary impact on the cap, but there's not going to be a lot of them right now. Well, what we've done is, you know, we've looked at Carson, we looked at the things that he does very, very well, and we've tried to say, okay, these are the things that he does well, these things are in what we do, okay? These are some things that we do, they don't match him. we got to find out if he can do them, and if he can't, that's got to go. That's one thing, is we're not going to force a guy to do something that, that, that he can't do. Um, we want to find out if he can or can't, and we most certainly will try. Um, one of the things we also have to do is we have to sit down with him and talk, talk to him and find out what he's comfortable with, which they've already done. So it's, it's not about just, hey, this is our offense, this is the way we do it. No, we've got to find out what fits a player. We do the same thing on defense. You, you don't want to put people in positions that they're not going to have success in. The, the first two years you guys had a slow start before you hit your stride, now you bring in a new quarterback. Is there anything you look at to, to make sure you can start fast? Well, I think the biggest thing more than anything else is we have to make the best of, of, of the off-season program, then make the best out of, out of, uh, out of training camp. Um, and this will be the first time I like to believe that things are going to be normal, and we'll see how that all pans out for us. Are there things that Carson can do now that can help make speed that process? Well, I, my understanding is he was, you know, he's reached out to, to some of the offensive guys and, and, and just trying to connect right now. Wow. <laughs> I've never really kind of thought that. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be interesting. I yeah. really do because, you know, now you – I think what may happen is if you ever did anything like that, I think it would make more high-priced guys available. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is those guys on teams that are sitting there with, you know, big contracts – and all of a sudden, there's a guy that they think might be able to replace that player. They might, you know, that, that's what might happen. Yeah. And that's probably why it may never come to fruition. Yeah. Like the NBA does it that way. Yeah. No, that's interesting. Is there, well, you had a lot of guys that have been in the season injured. Um, anybody who's not expecting to be available? Well, we're going to get together and we will talk about our, our, our situation, so circumstances before we start on April 18th. Well, we like we like the guys we have in place. We got plenty of time still. Um, Logan's coming along well, and we'll see where that uh, where that's where he's going to land. What kind of, what kind of jump did Samus make? Samus made a very good jump. Unfortunately, he pulled his hamstring that last game. Um, he's been around. Had a chance to see him. He's looking good. So we're excited for his potential. Um, it, it's kind of like getting back into that routine, you know, where we are right now um, with the uh, with the uh, draft phase of it. You get an opportunity to go out. You get an opportunity to go out and see the player. You see the player in their environment. 
um, you get to learn a little bit more about him that you hadn't in the last two years because you've been watching on by Zoom. Um, I think that's that, that that's very important as far as getting to know the person, who the player is. Um, being able to come here and, and in person and work through some of the things that we're working through as a league. You know, I know we'll have a very big discussion pretty soon on, on, on overtime. Um, but to see people's reactions, how people handle, I think helps. I think it's part of the process that we've missed. Um, and then hopefully being able to get participation, good participation numbers in the OTA program would be really cool. Um, and then again, being able to start and, and have a relatively normal off season, I think is going to be uh, is big for us. I think the biggest thing, you know, is that is that it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. You know, what happened in twenty in, in, in twenty twenty was a little because the, the, the division was down. We won the division. I get it, but then last season, I think, really was a little indication of, of that we're not where we needed to be or where we wanted to be. Um, and as we started to play, and you saw some positive things, you you saw the growth. So. It really was a reflection for me what happened my first two years in Carolina. To me, this third year is, is big, and I've said that, um, you know, and I believe it's an opportunity for us to take a step. How do you balance that? You talked about the urgency of finding a quarterback, but also maybe time for the same thing. Do you feel that you can pretty Well, um, the thing that's going to be interesting, and as we react to it, is we have a quarterback that, that, that's established. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's had some success. He has had some, you know, some tough times, but he's had some success, and we're going to try and build off of that. Not and not just that, but I think some of the young guys that we've had and we've had to play, I think that bodes well for us because that's how they get experience by playing them. Um, I think some of the things that we saw with our offense, some of the things that we saw them do with those. Offensive linemen, um, you know, the potential of what our defensive alignment line can be, um, some of the growth at some of the other positions. Yeah, to me, it bodes very well. I, I think the potential is there. We, we probably have to add a few more pieces, obviously, we believe, and we've got to identify those guys and get them on our team. Let's take a couple more, then we'll go outside. What do you think last year did for Chase Young? I think for Chase, it, it was. Um, a little bit of an awakening, a little bit of a realization. Um, one thing I really appreciate is how focused he is right now. He really is truly attacking his uh, his off season, his rehab program, um, and I think that's been good uh, for us. I think hopefully the realization that we hadn't arrived has set in, and that just showing up is not good enough. Well, with, without saying it and getting in trouble for making it sound like that, but yes, you know, um, in, in my conversations with him, he, 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 he says he's going to be here, and I'm pretty excited to see him here. Well, I, I think, again, at the end of the day, this is about what the players want. And you know that's kind of where we are with it. Okay, thank you. All right, we're gonna we're gonna move it outside now. Thank you.